right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, an authentic taste of French culture at Lexington's Woodland Park. This is just like in France. Um, it is becoming a hip thing in Lexington. We're taking you inside a small cafe that's become the next big thing. It's a new concept. French beer. We've got it all. Coffee. And the coffee cups are huge. And of course, authentic French crepes. It is. It is authentic. Very good. Come with us for French food and a taste of French culture on the side. It's Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs at Lexington's La Petite Creperie. Oh, one of my favorite uh, French sayings, bon appétit. Bon appétit. <laughs> bon appétit. <laughs> Tim Laird for more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time, we're getting a taste of France right here in Lexington. It's right across from Woodland Park, a small creperie which is named just that. In French, of course, it's La Petite Creperie, and it's very authentic. When I walked through the door, I just felt that, that presence. It is, it's wonderful. Oh, it's amazing. It really is authentic. It is, it is authentic. It's almost like stepping right out of Lexington and into a French cafe. It's a restaurant that actually is an idea from a couple of teachers. Coming to Lexington, I barely spoke any English. Although she comes from a restaurant family, Linda first started teaching French when she came to Kentucky several years ago. After a few years, I met uh, Shannon, my business partner. Many times we talked in the teacher's lounge about how one day would open a restaurant. They both agreed there was something missing from Lexington, a French cafe, just like you'd find anywhere in France. I drove 10 years in Lexington looking for the perfect patio for my daughter and I to uh, to enjoy a coffee or uh, something sweet and never found it. And we didn't know why there weren't 50 creperies here because they were so good and yeah. easy and people loved them there. So Shannon set out to fill the void. She came to me at school and said, Linda, I'm gonna go and make crepes at the farmer's market. You can go for it. And she went and was very successful. The lines were long and uh, we couldn't keep up with the man. Then Linda convinced Shannon to take it to the next level by opening their own restaurant. We found this house and this beautiful park that really remind me of European park thick trees and just green. It was really Linda who had to do a lot of convincing to get me to settle down uh, into a restaurant. And we did it. That's so here we are, the two French teachers opening this great oh. restaurant. It's a very beautiful patio. It's great to be out here and be able to have some crepes. A beautiful place. It's caught on. <laughs> on fire. Because all the action's here and the great food's here. You said, I can't find it anywhere else. You're going to do it. And, and you we did, did it. it. The crepes are great, no question and they've become quite popular with nearby UK students because they're both affordable and filling. Just simple and quick and cheap. And they're very filling and, and they're very nutritious and wholesome. But it's a whole meal in a crepe, which is a good thing. They're great for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or dessert. And there's a crepe for everyone. All right, we're in the kitchen of the La Petite Creperie. And it is kind of petite. I'm here with Aubrey. Hello. Hello. Aubrey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Aubrey Daly is in charge of the kitchen here. And though youth clearly is on her side, she comes to the Creperie with a lot of experience. I've loved to cook and bake my whole life. I started with my grandma and my dad in the kitchen. Take me through what uh, Chef is doing here. This is Chef Javier. How about this? We're going to see the real deal. This is how they do it in France, right yes. here in Lexington. Yes. It starts out with a batter. Tell me about the batter uh, for the base of our crepe. It starts with milk and water and eggs. And then we add in sugar, flour, salt, and vanilla. And a little bit of oil. Mix it all up. And that's it. It's very simple. One ladle in the middle of the griddle. And you said already pre-measured five ounces. You know how much yep. is in there every time. Yep. Same amount. Right dead center. Look at that. Yep. And then now, we take our, what I call the swirly stick. The swirly stick. I, think <laughs> I don't, 
I don't have a technical name for so it. So when I go into the kitchen store, I say, I want a swirly stick. They're going to know what <laughs> I'm talking about. A swirly stick. Uh, and then he just takes it with a really light hand and just drags the batter along. And I'll tell you, there's an artwork to that, too. I yes. mean, just to see how smooth and thin. And just like a pancake, it'll start to kind of bubble, and that's when you know it's ready to flip. And this is your crepe paddle. I, I, I call it the flippy stick. The flippy stick. <laughs> Absolutely, we call it a flippy stick. So you got the flippy and the swirly. <laughs> and, uh... Next comes the cheese. The standard is provolone. You can also substitute Swiss or blue cheese, okay. but all, they, they all start with provolone. You know what I like about the provolone, too? It melts very nicely and evenly mm -hmm. over the entire crepe. Yeah, and when you take a bite, it... It's, it's got that stringy factor. I love that. Provolone is the authentic way to go, but you could use anything you want at home. Actually, you can do that at home if you don't have a crepe maker like they do here at La Petite Creperie. You can do this on a skillet, right? A, a thin skillet? Yep. And load it up with whatever you want. This is a popular one. We like we kind of call it the Thanksgiving crepe. Okay. Um, it's got turkey, spinach, cranberries, potatoes, and onions. Thanksgiving dinner all a little bit. Crepe. Yes. I love that. Yes. This is our special house sauce. Okay. It's a French vinaigrette. It is a secret recipe. Oh, <laughs> Fold it in half. So we do a trifold. And what he's doing right now is scoring it and kind of maybe mushing some of the ingredients down so it's easier to fold. And then he's just going to fold one half over or one third over and then right over the top so it makes a nice little package. And all of our savory crepes, we do some fresh parsley on top for a little bit of color. A little bit of color yep. for the batteries. There it is, all wrapped up, ready to go. That's the Thanksgiving crepe. It's all in itself. It is, completely. Oh my God. Thanksgiving, right here on the plate, right here. Thanksgiving dinner, everything in there. Shannon, if you don't mind, I've got to try one of these. It's actually a full meal in, uh, in one crepe. Oh, this looks absolutely fabulous. Mmm. Wow, that is so good. In one bite, you're getting all those wonderful ingredients all coming together. That is incredible. And here's another favorite with ham and vegetables. It's just a simple um, ham, spinach, mushrooms, and tomatoes. First, the provolone. Fresh right. tomatoes. We try and keep all That's of our nice. ingredients fresh and local. Fresh, local, good for you? Mushrooms. Now, now mushrooms? Yep, sliced mushrooms. Now a little more spinach. It's almost like we're making a French pizza. And then, thin slices of cooked ham. And a little more secret sauce. Yep. Mustard, oil, what else? Oh, come <laughs> on, all right. Good try. <laughs> Here's the flipping. I love this part. This is uh, another piece of the artwork that happens. So we start folding it in half, getting a little more toast on it, a little more color. And there it is, another wonderful, savory crepe. Just that easy. It's quite delicious. You can go vegetarian too. This right. one is going to be a, a vegetable crepe. Okay. Um, right now we've got some really great bell peppers that Perfect. we're roasting. We've got a small little oven back there that oh, we roast. Nice. So it smells awesome. I do smell the roasting yeah. of, uh, of that. You know, yeah. Perfect ingredients yep. to put on. Now some mushrooms. And the potatoes we also roast in house too. That's great. And okay. all of them we toss in our special sauce. Vegetable crepe. It's really easy and delicious. It's very delicious and it's very uh, healthy. Merci beaucoup. For more information on La Petite Creperie or any other featured restaurants on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, log on to newlocaltv.com. And the crepes get even sweeter still to come. And these are all savory. Yes. But of course, people love sweet. My personal favorite, I call the cinnamon roll. Get the secrets to that coming up. Plus, there's more to the crepery menu than just crepes. Oh, look at the really? cheese, Ethan. Come and enjoy your cronenbourg at La Petite Crepe. And it may be a restaurant, but there's a lot more going on here than just cooking and eating. We really wanted this place to be a place where we could share and actually reach out to everybody, from the students. See how this authentic French dining experience is also like going to class when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. all love food and we all love people and hospitality. We're in Lexington at La Petite Creperie this time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. 
It's a taste of authentic French food that won't break the bank. And casual, casual dining uh, starting at $3.50. What started in the farmer's market is now a permanent fixture right across from Woodland Park. It's a sidewalk cafe of sorts where crepes are at the core, both sweet and savory. But there are other authentic tastes from France too, like the number one French beer. Cronenbourg. Come and enjoy your Cronenbourg at La Petite Crêperie. Linda Chambers is one of the owners of La Petite Crêperie. She's brought a lot of culture here and a few of her favorite things from home, like the French alternative to soda pop called Orangina. It's not like a soda, very healthy, and uh, that brings me back to, to France and my child's memories. A French way is really bring the pop down, you kind of shake it, and you uncap it. And just like when I grew up, the straw shred in it. It's just delicious. Yeah, just like back home. Come à la maison. Another beverage that takes her back is a cup of French roast. But this coffee actually comes from Kentucky. Then also you met your coffee roaster at the farmer's market we did. as well. Okay. We met with Scatter and, uh, and Keith, who were doing their coffee at the farmer's market. And they're so passionate, and we really, really love that about them. And uh, they, know, uh, they know their staff. They know everything about coffee. And of course, for us, we had to continue our, fr our farmer's market friendship. And we sell actually the coffee. We serve the coffee right here, French way, in a big bowl. Oh, that's I saw how we that. drink it in oh, that's, France. That's a way to start the day too. <laughs> I mean, none of these little petite cups. These are the big bowls. I yes. love that. The coffee takes Linda back, as do the sights and smells of fresh flowers. We, oui, alors, I love my daily bouquet. I start my day with my flowers. A good hostess always has flowers. So I continue the tradition, voila! I love, love working with my flowers. So you come to the restaurant, you will always have fresh flowers, fresh food, fresh coffee. Linda's business partner at the restaurant isn't from France, she's actually a bluegrass girl. But Shannon Arnold is set on keeping with the French tradition just the same. That's what we want. Uh, no self-respecting French cafe would be without dogs on the patio. And dogs are welcome on our patio, and they actually all get a treat. Come to find out. So um, we want to encourage people to come enjoy the park with their dogs, and then come here, and their dogs are welcome. Another French tradition <laughs> that continues here. Yes, um, a lot of people, and Twix uh, got his cue. <laughs> And the traditional French ham sandwich is here too. It's called the Croque Monsieur, and it's a crowd pleaser for sure. It was really good. I liked it. It's kind of like a grilled ham and cheese, but it gets better with bechamel sauce. This is our house made bechamel. Flour, butter, okay. we'll start with the roux, and then milk, salt and pepper, a little bit of nutmeg. So we're just gonna do a good helping of it straight on the bread. This is our Munster mozzarella mix. It's nice and gooey and creamy. Then we're gonna take a couple slices of our ham, just like that. So that is the base for the sandwich. We're ready for the grill. Just like a good American grilled cheese sandwich, it's cooked on cast iron with butter. And here we go, start off with a little butter. And then our sandwich goes right on there. And then, more butter. I'm gonna put a little bit on top. You gotta have a little on top too. Look how beautiful. I mean, that is just done. Oh, all right. Now here's the secret. We're gonna, uh, We're gonna cap it. Cap it off. And that'll keep all the heat in there. Mm -hmm. Melt all that cheese in there. Make sure it's wonderful and gooey. We cut it diagonal. It's there. Perfect. Yep. Oh, look at Good. the cheese even, and we just serve it right there alongside the salad. Ready to go. Ready to go. It was really good. Uh, I'll be coming back. You'll be coming back. And we're coming back too with more secrets. Well, it's a secret. Huh? Next, crepes for dessert at La Petite Creperie. And the secrets to doing those at home. More secrets of bluegrass chefs coming up. Tim Lair back with you with more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This time, we're at Woodland Park in Lexington, but it feels more like 
we've gone to France. So uh, it's really close from France, from France, but we uh, we were trying to uh, adapt it for customers here. This is La Petite Creperie. It's as authentic as it gets, especially when you consider that one of the owners comes directly from France. I'm from uh, Nancy, which is between Paris and Strasbourg. Linda Chambers opened this little cafe with Shannon Arnold in 2013. They're a pair of teachers who met at Lexington Sayer School. Well, you speak French uh, very fluently, and, mm -hmm. uh, and then Linda being from France, mm -hmm. that was a natural connection that you both had. And although they're in the restaurant business now, they're still doing a lot of teaching here too. I love to teach. I'm still teaching. We have conversation tables that meet here. Um, different levels of French can come and uh, practice their French and um, they're welcome to stay as long as they like. I hear French and English all the time. We constantly use the, the, the French language. We have students who actually uh, speak French and enjoy working here because it's also uh, something they really enjoy, not only food but uh, sharing the culture here. We have a small uh, lending library inside of personal books and people are encouraged to take those books, leave a different book if they have one. So if people are interested in reading French books, uh, this is a place they can find them. We really wanted this place to be a place where we could share and actually reach out to everybody, from the students to seniors to people here in the Chibi Chase neighborhood. They can come and actually experience the French culture. And there's nothing more enjoyable than eating at La Petite Creperie along with a big cup of French roasted coffee that comes from right here at home. You also have some wonderful artisan coffees too available. Yes, we get our coffee from Magic Beans, which is a local roaster. That's the way I like my coffee, just like that. It's a wonderful cup of coffee. It's not a weak, you know, watered down type of coffee either. So the thing that's really, really bringing me back to France are of course the big bowl of coffee that I always got in France uh, and also the crepes that are very simple with fresh ingredients and my favorite would be actually uh, strawberry sugar. There are all kinds of sweet crepes and back in the kitchen, Chef Aubrey is a master of making them all. We've got a really great uh, Belgian chocolate that we do. We do a chocolate ganache and strawberry. My personal favorite, I call the cinnamon roll. It's brown sugar, cinnamon, pecans. Oh. I make a homemade caramel sauce. Oh my gosh. Just put that inside and then a scoop of whipped cream. What's the wildest, craziest crepe you've ever made? Um, one of my first weeks here, I had a little boy who wanted peanut butter, Nutella, and bacon. There you go. Now that <laughs> sounds great. Yeah, the classic is Nutella and banana. Okay. That's very popular in France. Great. The Nutella banana crepe starts, like all the others, with a thin layer of batter on the griddle. Starts with oil, milk, eggs, water, flour. That's a little it. bit of vanilla and a little bit of salt and sugar. And that's all we need. Then, fresh sliced bananas. We go through a lot of banana. Oh, I'll bet. So he's just evenly distributing the banana. You want every bite to have a little every bit of everything. Every bite to have a little of banana in it, right? Yeah. That's almost a perfect pattern. Look yeah, at that. I know. I, mean, I know. So and we and have... the Nutella. Here's the Nutella coming out. Oh. Yeah, it? it's really good. It's a chocolate hazelnut combination. It's yes. just wonderful. Yes. It's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. It's just. I like to eat it by the spoonful. <laughs> the crepe gets its traditional trifold, and then it gets even sweeter. A sprinkle of powdered sugar, and then why not? We do a little drizzle of Nutella straight on top to make it pretty. Right oh, very nice. Perfect. Voila. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. The banana Nutella crepe. It's just like they do in France. And now, just like you can get at Woodland Park at La Petite Creperie. A big thanks to Aubrey, Linda, and Shannon for letting us in on their secrets. And thank you for watching. That'll do it for this edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time. The secret is... Secrets. Secrets. I'll give you one more secret. Secrets. Bonjour, my name is Linda Chambers, and uh, thank you for watching Les Secrets des Chefs du Bluegrass. That's another good secret.